Okay, so now that moving left and right is generally working for the most part, let's go ahead and add jumping. So to perform jumping, we're going to need to get the vertical axis, which we already did before, um, and see if basically the player is pressing the up button or the equivalent on their device. And then, depending on if that is pressed up or not, and whether the character is on the ground already or not, we will allow the player to jump. So, okay, so let's comment this move left and right, and then we'll have a space over here for jumping. So a couple ways that pop into my head about how we can do jumping. One way would be to see if the Y velocity is zero, because if that's the case, then it's probably standing on top of something. Um, but probably a better way would be to see if there's an actual collision between this game object and a collidable object, and if it's standing on top of that object. So let's create a method here. If standing on object is true, then we will allow it to jump. So we could make this a property or just a method. I'll make it a method here. So public boolean is standing on collidable object. Let me rename that in there. So this is going to need to check colliders. And to check check for colliders, we're going to need to make sure that it has a collider. So I don't necessarily want to force the player to have a collider, so I'm not going to require it up here. And the reason for that is that sometimes you might have a character that can pass through walls and therefore doesn't collide with anything. You can, of course, require it if you want. But I will have a variable set for the collider. So let's do that here. Collider or player collider, maybe to be a little more specific. And we will check on awake if there is one. So let's get that collider 2D. And so we'll only check to see if it can jump if it has a collider. So if player collider exists, then we'll check that collider. So let's see if the collider is colliding. So we can do that with collider 2 d dot overlap collider so we can apply a contact filter there which is basically filtering out some colliders from other ones that we don't want in the results so for instance if a collider is a trigger collider a trigger collider isn't meant to actually block game movement it's only meant to spawn events so you might want to say filter out colliders that are set as a trigger collider and it'll return a list of results here. So let's create a contact filter 2D. And we'll call this filter 2D, which is a new contact filter 2D. And I believe this is just a structure. So we can change the values in here, such as trigger. So use trigger, set to filter contact based on trigger collider involvement and i believe we want to set that to false because we don't want it to contact we don't want this to return a list that includes trigger colliders um so let's add that in there as the filter 2d and we're going to return it into a results array so let's create that array here and we'll pass it in but we do need to initialize it so a new collider 2d array and i suppose for now we can just initialize it with uh, 10 spaces that should be enough and so we get the results it fills in here so now we want to loop through those results so for each collider 2d collider and results we want to check if character is on top of collider and if so then return okay so i suppose what we can do here if it did return that it's overlapping um we can make sure that it's on the same z value because if it's further in the background like a paper mario type of thing then it wouldn't be technically on top of it if that item is way further in the z background because in unity everything is still technically 3d so we want to check if the collider.transform.z is equal to the player collider.transform.z. 
And if so, then we can say that it is colliding and therefore return true. Otherwise, if it gets all the way down here and it hasn't returned true yet, then we can return false. Not 100% if, sure, if this method's foolproof or not, but we can try it out for a while. So let's set some description here. Checks if there are any non-trigger colliders that are below the player. Okay, so I thought about it for a little while, and I don't think that this method is going to work properly. Uh, well, it would work if you're standing directly on top, but the problem is it would also include uh, overlapping collisions from the left, right, and top, and we don't want those collisions to allow the player to jump. So what we can actually do here is a simple cast where we cast in the negative one, uh, basically the downwards y direction. So new vector two, zero, negative one. And we return that into the results array. And we want to use the same contact filter, so filter 2D. And we also want a distance. So this would be the standing contact distance. And we could just set that up top to something like 0 0.1. Public float standing contact distance is equal to 0.1 f. And honestly, I don't think this is a value which would really need to be changed, but I guess we can leave it there for right now. So in this different method, it's actually returning a list of raycast hit 2Ds. So let's change that here. Of course, we need to instantiate the array as a raycast hit 2D as well. Okay, and the location of the contact filter is also changed here. It needs to go before the list of results let's see here and i think the last variable still remains the float for distance let's double check that uh yeah that should be correct so let's change that to raycast hit and now a hit will have a collider so we can do hit.collider and get the same values there okay so now what this cast is going to do is it's going to return a list of colliders that exist below the player at the max standing contact distance of 0 0.1 really it should be directly on top of it but for right now uh, we can let that value be alone and we also need to check if those colliders have the same z position to make sure that that object isn't supposed to be in the background in terms of a 3d world um, now i'm going to rename this method a little bit and we're going to call it is on top of collider which doesn't necessarily mean that the character should be allowed to jump so another thing i'm going to check for here if the character is on top of the collider and the player rigid body dot velocity of y is equal to zero so the reason for this is that we want to make sure that the player is not jumping already and that the player is on top of the collider so i think by combining these two requirements it should give the most consistency so now let's go ahead and apply a jump force so the well we have to set the y force here so y force and we'll default that to zero but if it actually makes it here then we can set that to y input times jump speed times time dot delta time and now with this y force we can pass that into this vector over here and now we just need a jump speed variable so public float jump speed and we'll just default that to one here or if we can make them like i don't know 10 and 50 i think a character usually jumps a lot faster than it runs for most 2D platformer games. And uh, let's see if all that updates in the inspector here. Okay, cool. So we have a move speed and a jump speed. So let's go ahead and hit play and see if a jump button works at all. So you can see when I hold the W button down that it does actually jump a little bit, but not nearly enough. Uh, we probably need to bump that jump speed up quite a lot. So let's change this to something like a thousand. And when it's in the air and too far from this ground, we get an error, which is basically that there is no collider here. 
So what we actually want is to make sure that hit.collider is actually set here. So just do hit.collider. And with that, we should be able to have the character jump. So let's give this a shot here. Okay, pressing W. Uh, kind of seems to work, although it doesn't seem particularly consistent. So maybe we need to tame the jump speed down a bunch. Maybe in this case, uh, what we actually want is to remove the time.delta time here, because this is supposed to be an instantaneous force. So let's see if that makes it more sense. So let's set the jump power to five, because with removing the time.delta time, it should remove a lot of the uh, jump power needed to make it go up. So let's see here, jump power 500, press up. Okay, so when we try to jump here, we get a lot of inconsistency in how high he actually jumps. And I think I figured out the reason for this. It's because the Y input isn't always set to 1 when we press down on a control stick or we press W on our keyboard. Um, but we want to make sure that it will always be set to 1, basically. We can do that by checking if the value is above 0, and if so, then we just set the import value here to a solid one. So let's see here. Jump power, we can set times equal to y input is greater than zero, and we'll return either one or zero. So if y input is greater than zero, this value is one. Otherwise, this is zero, the jump power is zero. So let's try that. I'm gonna hit play here. Um, Okay, so it seems to be consistent, uh, but I guess we have to boost the jump power way up. Okay, still kind of weird. What if we make this really big? Ah, okay. Okay, um... Okay, let's work on this code a little bit. First off, we don't want to go through the process of checking all these colliders unless there's a Y input. So if the Y input is greater than zero, then we'll just say it's trying to jump. And if it's trying to jump, we don't need to do any of that one zero thing. We can just have this be set to the jump power altogether. So let's give that a shot. I'll, j I'll, I'll bump the jump power up here to make sure it can actually jump high enough to be the, oh, what happened? Okay, so something crazy happened there. Let's bump that back down. So let's see, jump power of five. Okay, yeah, that's more reasonable. Um, I guess when I set it to 500, it went to the moon, quite literally. Um, but now this is working quite nicely because the uh, jump is consistent here. So now it's not being determined by how hard I'm pressing on the up button or the up joystick. It's only being determined on whether that's in a positive direction or not. Now you could also set it to be something like when space is pressed, then add it. That might make a lot more sense depending on your game. Um, for right here though, I think this works pretty well. So let me see, what are the right values for move speed? Let's try 50. Uh, no, that's still too slow. 500. Oh, okay. It's being capped by the max run speed, right? Um, 10 is clearly way too fast there. Let's see, five, go a bit fast. Let's set it to three. Let's see, maybe we want them to have a little bit more jump power. And the nice thing about uh, putting this all on the inspector while we have the play button running is we can play around with values that won't be permanent and then we can figure out what values we want and copy those over into the actual project when we stop hitting play. So I think this is actually um, not too bad here. Maybe I bump the jump speed up a little bit more. So it's now a jump speed of four. And that seems like a decent 2D platformer controller being stopped by the physics on the ground, jumps at the right time. So yeah, this is all pretty cool. Um, so let's go ahead and update those values. I think it was 500, 8, and 4. Just to be sure, I'll hit play one more time. So let's see. Yep, the jumping, the movement, left and right. And can also fall off a cliff and lose the game. Well, the game doesn't technically get lost here. What's really happening is he's falling for all eternity, never to ever, well... <laughs> Let's just say that's another kind of hell. <laughs> Poor guy. And so that in a nutshell is how you do basic movement with 2D rigid bodies inside of Unity. So, so I've been Chris. I hope you guys have learned quite a bit about all of this. If you don't like having the physics-based movement, you can always change your rigid body to kinetic 
a kinematic movement. And then that's a little bit different in how you script it, but it's not too bad. But that's going to be it for this part of the tutorials on setting up basic 2D rigid body dynamic movement inside of Unity. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future Unity content.